So welcome again to another review. This is the Ostar Curing Light. Although this time the product that I'm reviewing is not for something entirely used for an endodontic treatment. I will prove in this video it has a few tricks up its sleeve, including an amazing crack detection feature. So let's get started with the unboxing. This is the Ostar Curing Light from Woodpecker. And this was given to me by toothsaver.co.uk. And this unit retails for around £449 at the time of this video being made. But this price was part of an offer for £50 off. The first thing that we are presented with once the box is open is some kind of certificate of authenticity and the instruction manual. The next thing we have is the charging base and we come to the first unusual characteristic of this product and that is a radiometer. This is going to measure the UV light intensity of the curing light as we will demonstrate later on. And at the back is the charging port to plug the base into the wall. We have some disposable sleeves And I really, really like this. This is a blue light filter shield shaped like a tooth, really, really snazzy. However, I've noticed that when using this filter clinically, that it is just too small and I have been using a handheld filter with a larger surface area. Next, we have a detachable optical unit that attaches to the main body. I'm not sure if this is autoclavable or not. I've had a look at the instructions, but it's not entirely clear. Here we have a composite depth cure checking jig. We also have a focused pinpoint beam filter, more on that later. And a power jack adapter, and I'm sure the plug will be correct for your giving region if you buy the unit. I happen to live in the UK and get a three point plug. And finally, the main unit, definitely not autoclavable. So to turn the unit on, you have to press the main button shown here. And unlike other units, you cannot manually turn it off and have to wait for a certain time frame before it turns itself off. Charging the unit is very simple. Just plug the power jack adapter into the wall and into the rear of the charging base. And you can see clearly on the LED screen at the front of the base, the state of the battery in the main unit, which again, I think is quite a nice touch. So there are seven working modes that this UV light can produce, and they can be roughly organized into five main groups. Once the unit has been turned on, these modes can be selected using the M slash T button. The first group, is what I like to call the traditional curing settings where the intensity of the beam remains constant throughout the given time frame. You have normal mode. If you keep the MT button down firm, the time can be changed in this mode from 5, 10, 15 and 20 second intervals. The next mode is high and the radiometer shows that the intensity almost doubles in value. The available curing times in this mode, however, are limited to either three or five seconds. Finally, we have the highest intensity curing setting called turbo, which again is almost three times the intensity of normal mode. And the available curing times are even lower at one second or three seconds. Included with this unit is a point cure lens, which provides pinpoint curing to help the tack curing of veneers and porcelain crowns and onlays. It is suggested that turbo mode set at one second curing duration is to be used when cementing these types of restorations. The margin is quickly blasted with a curing light, then excess resin is removed, then the lens is taken off, and then the whole restoration is then cured. The lens has an easy to use magnetic snap on feature. So I think sometimes it can be useful to do a little comparison. We have three curing lights here, the first is an uber posh Ivoclar unit retailing for around £900 found on Henry Shine. We ha then have a very cost effective BA International curing light retailing for around £180 and then obviously we have the O-Star. The first thing you notice is how slim and small the O-Star is compared to the other units. We've all been there doing a large three hour composite bonding session treating three to three 
and holding the light cure can sometimes feel like our hand is going to drop off because it gets so heavy. Surely the relatively light O-star is going to reduce this aching feeling significantly. The second thing to mention is the size of the optical head. For example, this BA International head is much smaller than our O-star and this is significant because imagine if the surface area that you have to bond is larger than the head on your light cure. In effect, you have to cure twice to ensure the whole layer is covered, wasting precious time. With the O-star's relatively large optical table, it can obviously cure a larger surface area. Finally, the light cure intensity also cannot be matched. I've done a little test and found that the cheaper BA International UV light intensity is quite lower than our O-star, and although the Ivoclar is slightly better, it does not match how bright the O-star is. Whilst I was planning for this video, I had an idea about 3D printing a custom gauge and seeing how far the different light units could cure up to, and I also did a couple of tests, and this idea was based mainly around the composite depth gauge found included with the O-Star accessories. But I thought, in the end, it wasn't really a fair comparison, and when would you ever cure layers more than 4mm, especially due to the problem with the C factor? So moving on from the more traditional operational modes, this light cure can be placed into ortho or orthodontic mode. The mode is available in either 5 or 10 consecutive light bursts as shown here, presumably so the operator can secure brackets or attachments onto teeth in a more efficient way. The intensity of ortho mode is comparable to turbo mode. The next group of operational modes are the soft cure modes or ramping, call it what you will. The whole point of having a curing intensity that slowly ramps up or a pulsing effect is to slow down the rate of the curing time which is thought to have three main effects. One is to decrease polymerization shrinkage, two is to produce less stress buildup at the bonded in phase and three is to extend the visoelastic phase. And how do I know this? Well I asked another dental YouTuber Dr. Al Zane for advice on this subject and I've actually left a link to their channel page in the description box below as they also have quite a few interesting videos available. What mode is best, you ask? Well, according to Dr. Al Zane, the evidence does not show any mode is particularly better than the other, and choosing is mainly down to personal preference. The third and final mode has to be my favourite, and one I have used many times since being given the unit. I am, of course, referring to the check mode. Check mode is officially used to show areas of decay in a cavity, and the main physical difference between this mode and the others is that the light intensity is seen as much less. Although I'm not entirely sure if it's still a good idea to look directly at this light without a blue light filter, it's advised that when using check mode you also wear a special set of glasses and these can be bought from toothsaver.co.uk for £34.95. It must be noted that when using check mode without the glasses you can still see the decay show up, however I can confirm that when using these special glasses it does show the decay visually much clearer. However, trying to get a video slash photo of this is proving very difficult, meaning the footage does not do this mode justice. When using the caries detector mode in real life, decay tends to show off a very distinct and obvious iridescence that just does not show very well on photographic equipment. Another more unofficial use is as a crack detector. This works so well, this is mainly due to the fact that the light intensity in this mode is vastly reduced so you can have direct vision on the tooth whilst you are testing for cracks. Again, it works really, really well. So there you have it, a lovely unit, a lot of bang for your buck. It's cost effective with a wide range of modes and settings. Great intensity and crack detection mode is really, really useful. And as ever, I'd like to thank you for watching the video. And if you like my content, please like and subscribe to my channel and support me in creating more videos. See you soon.